without further ado, I'll introduce you properly. Right at the tail of this song, they're saying faith is what faith is. What is it? What is faith? Well, Hebrews 11:1 1 said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yeah. So that's what faith is. And what's it for? Well, uh, you can't be saved without it. Right. The Bible said, by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself is a gift of God. You can't live with, for God without faith because the Bible said we live by faith. You can't walk the Christian walk without faith because the Bible said we walk by faith and not by sight. You can't please God without faith because the Bible said without faith it's impossible to please Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and, uh, That's and fairly time. important. There's one more. <laughs> okay. You, you, you can't grow and develop spiritually without faith because Paul said right into the Thessalonians, your faith groweth exceedingly. Mm. Mm. Is there a order of importance in the things that you just described? Absolutely. Uh, without faith, it's impossible to please Him. He yeah. that cometh unto God must believe that He is. You can't come to God any other way. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, faith's mm -hmm. important, uh, but I, I've written over 120, well, about 125 books and only 10, 12 percent of them are on faith. Mm -hmm. right. The majority of them are on other subjects. Yeah. And, and we've written and published and distributed here in America 64 million mm. My goodness. books. That doesn't count millions overseas. Wow. But most of them are on some other subject. <laughs> now, for instance, uh, a pastor said to me, well, a pastor from California at a convention, he said to me, I, uh, I had a young man from my church that wanted to come to your school, mm -hmm. and he had heard some derogatory things, so I didn't recommend him. Mm but said he came anyway <laughs> and said he came back home at Christmas time, Christmas break, and I said to him very snotty way, I said, to him, well, I guess you've learned all about that faith business. <laughs> said he looked at me and said, no, Pastor, the greatest thing I learned was love. Mm. And the pastor said both of us started weeping. I said, forgive wow. me, forgive wow. me. Mm. I said, no, love's number one. Yeah. Yeah. Because you see, faith worketh by love, the yeah. Bible right. said. Amen. So unless you love, you can't get your faith to work. Yeah. Wow. I have to say um, that probably a lot of who I am today is a result of your ministry through my parents and then thus to me. Yeah. Uh, because my dad, and last night it was so funny, um, my mom and dad and the boys, you were with Mr. LaHaye, uh, were sitting around the table last night. and. They were excited and sent their love and everything to you guys. And, and I said, Dad, tell me some of those stories that I had forgotten. And they both, my, both of my parents just sat there and wept at the table last <laughs> night talking about how, how their life was just completely changed. My dad was in the de denomination as a minister, as a mu music leader. And um, we had visited my, my grandparents in Phoenix. And she, my grandmother kept laying this book around, Prayer Secrets, all over the house. Everywhere my dad would go, she'd go put that book. <laughs> Finally, he picked it up and read it. And he just wept, and it changed his life. And I remember, as I was very young, as a little, little girl, um, our vacations, because my father and mom pastored, our vacations were always... Uh, centered around where Brother Hagen was going to be ministering, you know, and when you were yeah. in Amarillo, Texas, remember yeah, yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And and you would go, <laughs> and my dad then kind of started to lead some of your praise and worship, and mom would play the organ back yeah. when you did the Howard Johnson hotels. Yeah. But it changed their life, and thus I was brought up under your ministry, you know, praise through God, through you and through my parents. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Great. And then we met at a Kenneth Hagin camp meeting. Yeah. <laughs> which was the greatest thing. So maybe that was all, what it was all about. Yeah. You know, that's a, that was a, uh, we're going to, you know, if you don't mind, uh, right. one of the questions that I wanted to, to get into, and I'm going to introduce you properly in just a second, um, was what do you want our generation, how do we build on what you have taught now all of these years? How many years have you been teaching and preaching? 66 years. 66 years. So, when just give me a second to properly introduce you and, and be thinking about what you want our generation, how do we build on it? What do you want me to take away from the 120 books? What, you know, so we'll do that. Uh, maybe you're a new convert. Maybe you uh, don't know anything about 
TBN about, you know, Christianity. Maybe you're watching and uh, you don't know who these people are sitting with us. Maybe you don't know who we are. Um, we are here to just kind of pull out of the pioneers, one of the, you know, if not the pioneer, certainly considered one of the pioneers of the faith movement, uh, Reverend Kenneth and Aretha Hagen from Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, author of many, many, many books, and founder president of Rama Bible Training Center. And um, I think that if you did a bit of reminiscing, my reminiscing is that in, in throughout most of the 80s, uh, I worked here at Trinity Broadcasting, and I was a director. And so I sat in the truck yeah. and had all the cameras and actually directed the conferences, you know, and some of the names that just kind of pop into my head during a, you know, uh, Oral Roberts would preach one night, and then you would preach one night, and then, you know, uh, Norval Hayes would preach one night, and, and you know, John Osteen, and, and all of these people that... Um, you know, are the ones that I remember. And my job was to sit back and mm -hmm. I took it real seriously because I actually had to interpret what you were saying with the camera. My job was to sit and tell the cameraman to be on this size shot or this size shot or a two shot or a one shot. Yeah. And then as people, as I was listening to you very intently, then I would cut away to people as they would make notes in their Bible and, and to make the presentation of what you were preaching interesting for the viewer at home. So I think I had like hypersensitive hearing because I was trying to listen, communicate to my cameraman at the same time. And I think that a lot of what uh, the faith message is obviously went into yes. both of us, very yes. significant, very significant way. So, with that said, um, what do you, what do you think we should know about what you've taught for 66 years, and how do we build on it? What's the next step? Well, uh, let me preface this by saying this: uh, I was healed as a 17-year-old. Doctor said, "Well, gave me no hope; had to die." But uh, Mark 11, 23 and 24 seemed to just sort of leap out of the Bible to me. And, uh, and by praying Mark 11, 24, I was completely healed. My paralysis disappeared, incurable blood disease. And so uh, it's just a matter of getting faith into people. Yeah. Faith in the Word of God. Faith in the Bible. Right. Faith in what God said. Right. Right. And so... I, uh, I was always strong. I pastored another 12 years, and I never thought of it. My wife called my attention to it. She said, honey, just don't on me. In 12 years, Pastor, well, we never did bury one church member. Oh, my goodness. And, and oh, I wow. went back and checked my records. Wow. And over 12 years, I'd only had about seven funerals. Wow. And, and, I, and I, they were either someone that was kin to somebody in my church. Sure. Or someone that was... Uh, uh, you know, uh, moved away years ago and they came back there to bear them. So, mm. but uh, I, I was always strong on faith. Now, of course, as a pastor, you've got to preach in many, many different subjects. Sure. And I very seldom really preach publicly on the subject of faith. But I taught them in the, in the home, you mm. know, in the, the sick room. Yeah. Same lessons I teach now. Wow. And, uh, and so <clears throat> the Lord said to me in May of 1950, now, to me, it was an audible voice. If there'd been anybody else present, I don't know whether they heard or not, but to me, it's just as real as some man, because it's a man's voice, and I believe with Jesus, said, I want you to go teach my people faith. I've taught you faith th through my word. I've permitted you to go through certain experiences, and you've learned faith both through my word and by experience. Now, go teach my people what I taught you. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I started having day services. And I'd teach on the subject of faith mm. in my crusade. Night services, whichever way the Lord led. Evangelistic type message. Twice a week we'd speak on healing and have a healing service. In the smaller churches, the bigger churches every night. And, and so for many years, I taught faith, mm. you know, because that's what the Lord said do. Right. And, and, and of course, it just built up through the years. But uh, I know I, as pastor for 12 years, I uh, was, was uh, associated with one of the full gospel denominations. Sure. 
And uh, I'd do a lot of preaching. They'd ask me to preach at fellowship meetings. And of course, back in those days, I was young, <laughs> uh, to youth meetings. And I'd always speak on faith and healing, yeah. primarily faith. Some of the pastors said, why, don't, why do you do that? I said, well, I want these young people to hear that while they were young. Right. Right. Now, see, I heard it, got a hold of it on the bed of sickness. I was, I was bed fast 16 months mm. and was healed at 17 years of age. Mm. Well, I, I'm 83. I'll be 84 in August. Mm. But uh, I haven't had a headache since 1933. <laughs> oh, Amen. 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 <laughs> now, see, I'd be foolish to tell you that. My wife said I didn't know better, but that's true. I haven't had the flu. Because women would speak up, wouldn't they? Oh, yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. But you see, it's just a matter of learning to walk with faith. And I, so I said to these people, I want to get this into the, your, your youth. Yeah. yeah. They said, well, it's a good thing you preach it because I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that's, you know, different ones have called, are called to different ministries. Right. Sure. The body of Christ needs all of them. Right. See, I can help people all the time. They, there's a lot more in the Bible besides faith. Sure. But, but see, God told me you know, to emphasize that. Sure. And so that's the reason I did. Yeah. Right. Now, someone else, God may lead them and their primary message is prophecy. Sure. And someone else, their primary message may be prayer. And then an evangelist, his message is salvation. Right. And all of it's important. And all of it has its place. And I, as a pastor, I preach, you know, on all kinds of subjects. In fact, I'd preach a series on prophecy way back right. a couple of years ago. Right. Uh, and, and I became known sort of as a prophecy preacher. Right. But see, when God said emphasize faith, well, then I just did what he said. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Is there a way to, it, does, let me just ask some, some kind of uh, uh, simplistic questions. Yeah. Does does faith, is it an entity in you that grows and shrinks depending on what maybe you're experiencing at the time? I mean, how, explain kind of uh, the dynamic. Is it, is it just your, the way you perceive your situation? Tell, what, what is it inside of you that you step into and understand to not have a headache in since 1933? Well, I never think headaches, but you know. Right. Uh, you know, now, now two or three times, in 66 years, I passed up, you know, marvelous opportunity to have a headache. <laughs> I started leaving the office building I, uh, out there one day, you know, from Raymond. Turned out, just as I turned out in the street, my head, man, just, whoo, I just said, no, you don't. I don't have yeah. it. And it left immediately. Yeah. Left immediately. Yeah. No, we learned to walk by faith. Now, the thing is this. It's not a matter of so much faith. It's a matter of just the Word of God. Yeah. yeah. Faith, the Bible says, come by hearing, and hearing by the Word. Hearing what? The Word of God. Right. And you've got to get it beyond your head into your heart. And yeah. the way you do that is by meditation. Meditate upon the Word. Feed upon the Word. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Right. Now, what he's saying is, what food, bread stands for food, what food is to the body, the Word of God is to the Spirit. Right. I used to say to our children, when they were young, at home, we'd pray with them and read the Bible, you know. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when I send this, read the Word, I'd say, this feed our spirits. Mm. Mm. Now, if you'll think like that, it'll help you to become more spirit conscious. Right. That you are a spirit being, you have a soul and you live in the body. Right. And so this feed our spirits. And, and so uh, that's what you have to do, right. it's just simply. Now, let me give you this illustration Please. about faith, whether it's faith for healing, whether it's faith for salvation, whatever it's faith for. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Right. I was conducting a meeting in Pomona, California, mm -hmm. 1955. And uh, <clears throat> the pastor came to me. We was there four weeks in one church. I used to hold long meetings. <laughs> I'd go three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks. Wow. Teaching on faith every day. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the pastor said to me, Brother Hing, there's a little guy here who wants to talk to you. He said, I talked to him, thought I got him saved. He claims to be an agnostic. <laughs> now, an agnostic is not like an atheist says there is no God. Agnostic said there may be, but if there is, I don't know it. Right, right. And so uh, <clears throat> he said, uh, but he said, I believe he's ready. You know, he said he's 72 years old. He's had a 
massive heart attack. Doctor said he could die just any minute. So after the morning service, I, uh, I took time to talk to him. And right at first, he was very nice. But then the further he went, the louder he got. And he said, if there is a hell, which I don't believe there is, and I go there, and you're to blame. Or if there is a heaven, which I don't believe there is, <laughs> But if I miss it, you're to blame. I said, how am I to blame? Well, now, if you can prove to me that there is a God, mm. then I could believe. Wow. I said to him, now, God, Jesus did not say, go into all the world and prove to people there's a God. Right. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Just tell the good news that Jesus died for them. Yeah. And I said, besides that, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 said, he that cometh unto God must believe that he is. Wow. But you don't believe he is, so you can't come to him. Goodbye, I'll see you. <laughs> Turned around and walked away from him. <laughs> now, God's my eternal witness. I went out a side door of the church, <laughs> got in my car to go home. Well, I had a trailer at that time. So, But anyway, he shook his fist at me, see? Well, two days later, the pastor said, Brother Hagin, that little fellow's back, and he wants to talk to you. He yeah, said, now, he's really changed. Said, I, I really, he seems to be humble. Said, I, I, really, I said, well, okay, if I can help him. So right at first, he did well. Then the further he got, the louder he got. I thought, with well, that heart trouble, he's liable to fall dead here. But if there is a heaven and I miss it and there is a hell and I go there, there is a God, you're to blame. Oh. You preachers are to blame and you're to blame. Well, why? Well, if you can prove to me that the Bible is so, you can prove to me that the Bible, that there is a God, then I could be saved. I said, I told you before, I'm going to tell you again. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 said, He that cometh unto God, now cometh unto God, must believe that he is, yeah. and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. But you don't believe he is, so you can't come to him. Goodbye, I'll see you. <laughs> And I went out the side door of the church. Now, God's my witness. When I went out that side door, that little fellow stuck his tongue. Stuck his tongue out at me like a little kid. He did. He actually did. Now, two days later, the pastor said to me, Brother Hagin, that little fellow's back. Now, as I got in my car, now we were traveling in those days with an uh, uh, Imperial Mansion Spartan trailer. Right. Yeah. 42, 43 feet long, you know. Yeah. And so my wife didn't go to day service. She had cooked a noon meal. We needed to make meal in the day. And the kids were going with us. See, and they were teenagers. They was taking their high school from University of Oklahoma. Right. And I had to sit down with them three hours in the afternoon and, you know, to get their lessons and one thing or another. So, so I, I, I'm, I, I'm on the way home. We we'll call it home, the trailer, see? Right. But I said, dear Lord, that, that dear fella, I mean, 72 years old and got this some, had a massive heart attack. The doctor said he could die any minute. And if he does, he's going to hell. Yeah. Mm. Now, you said faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. Yeah. Mm. Now, I gave him scripture. Mm. I told him the, on the first day, go into all the world and preach the gospel. That is, Jesus died for you. And, and then secondly, Hebrews eleven six: without faith, it's impossible. He that cometh unto God must believe it. Now, I said, may that scripture, Hebrews eleven six. I pray that when he's asleep, he'll dream about that verse. Yeah, yeah. I pray that if he wakes up, that verse will be standing at the foot of the bed, staring him in the face. <laughs> I pray that in the daytime, as he walks around, that verse will just churn on the inside of him. Yeah. Sure enough, two days later, the pirate said, Brother Hagin, that little fellow's back. <laughs> he said, I'm convinced this time he's really changed. He said, he seems to be very humble. Wow. And so sure enough, he came to me and said, Brother Hagin, uh, you know that scripture you gave me? I said, yeah. He said, I can quote it to you. He quoted it. He said, you know what? I said, what? He said, last two nights, all night long, I've dreamed about that. He said, I woke wow. up and that verse is standing at the foot of the bed. Oh, my God. And all day long, he said, it's found it on. He that cometh unto God must believe it. I can't come to him unless I believe it. I believe he is. Now, what will I do? Got him saved. Wow. Laid hands on him, got him filled with the Spirit. <laughs> Laid hands on him and got him healed. He went back to the same cardiologist. That same doctor said, I'll tell you somebody up there likes you. You got a brand new heart. Oh, wow. Okay. Praise, Praise God. God. Now, how did he get faith? By hearing. Wow. By, hearing by hearing and hearing by the word. Yeah. Now, whether it's healing, whether it's salvation, or whatever it is you need. Yeah. I've said it for over 60 years, and we we'll keep saying it. Find scriptures. Now, I didn't say a little script. You can't just take some isolated text. Right. But scriptures, plural. 
that covers your case. Yeah. And meditate on those scriptures and think on them. Wow. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And you've got a solid foundation for faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and Amen. in faith in every area. You've heard it a million times, haven't you? Yes. How has uh, you're in Tulsa, and how how long has uh, Rama been going? Since '74. Yeah. Since '74. Well, we st we started. Yeah, I started in '74. Graduated first class in '75. Wow. Um, and how many children? How uh, children? How many kids? They're children now to me. <laughs> how many yeah. kids have went through the school? We've graduated over twenty-three thousand. Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness. And Isn't we're going to graduate Friday night. Uh, a little over seven hundred. Oh, oh that's goodness. awesome. And you've got two children. Yes. Ken Two. Jr. and Patsy. Okay. How are they doing? Wonderful. Good. You know, I was, uh, Ken Jr. has been doing some spots for us yeah. for the champion stuff, and it's just amazing to see him. Yeah. And he's really step, stepped in there, hasn't he? Yes. Yeah, he's the pastor of the he's church. He's the pastor of the church. Pastor. He and Lynette, and they're doing a wonderful job. Doing wonderful work. And my daughter, Pat, you know, her husband passed away two years ago. Right. And she's just doing wonderfully. She's going on. She's taking care of the office. She does all that. She goes to the churches, preaches there right. for them. She, I think she just finished a tour. Now, have you done a lot of teaching? No, not a lot. See, you've just been quiet, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> not a lot. Not a lot. Oh. I just know that God is so real. Yes, Amen. He is. And I know that He heals. Yes, He does. Heal me of cancer. Amen. Talk. Tell us about that. Well, in 19... Six years ago this August. Yeah. See, now, Brother Hagen... He knows. Has, he knows. I had to, and he has known yeah. for years. He can tell you what I time, what day of the week. <laughs> Where it was. <laughs> Where it was. <laughs> I was pronounced with uh, cancer in my left breast. And you know, when that hits you, when they tell you that, I don't know, you just go bananas. You yeah. just poop, you know. That's the death sentence. Right. And so uh, I went to my, when I got home, the doctor had called my doctor and he had a message on the pager thing, said, I want to see you Monday morning, nine o'clock in my office. And so I went to him and they re-examined and everything. And he told me the thing, same thing and I said, Okay, if I have to have surgery, I want the best doctors you have in here. And I did get them, and they were wonderful. And they said, I said, I can't go now. Yeah. I said, we got a camp meeting coming up next yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Brother Higgin, where were you? Were you with her? Oh, yeah. What, what, I know what came up, but what did you, what did, how did that make you feel? Well, of course, you don't, you don't feel too good about it. Right. No. Yeah. Uh, one place where, uh, now we, we've been married 63 years this coming <laughs> oh, November. Can you believe it? Isn't that awesome? But, uh, see, she, she was a Methodist. Now, I was Baptist to begin with. <laughs> in fact, the first church I pastored in was a country church, but we said really Baptist. Uh -huh. and for about three years, I then received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I tell folks, got the left foot of fellowship among the Baptist, <laughs> came over among the Pentecostals. But anyway, uh, we were married, like I said, November 19 and 38, November okay. 25th. 25th, yeah. And so, uh, you know, in, here in Texas, you know, cold weather starts coming in in November, December. So we call it a nor that came in. And, and so her throat got sore. And so she said, I'll have to go to the doctor. She said, get my throat. They called it those days, mopped out, you know. Mm -hmm. They didn't have uh, the miracle drugs and antibiotics right, and so on. Right. Every year. And she said, it's sore all the whole winter. Mm. Well, I knew this was a wonderful opportunity because she don't know, you know, because they haven't been taught that. Right. So I just simply said, because see, Mark 11, 23 said, who's ever should <laughs> say it, not doubt in his heart. Right. I said, no, we won't go to the doctor. That sore throat will leave you and never come back. Now you asked her, we've been married 63 years and never has. Oh. But see, she thought that she could get by on my faith. Right. You can't do that forever. Right. right. Nope. See? Right. Nope. And, and so therefore she didn't try to build hers then, so she had some of these physical problems that she had to right. resort to. But even in the midst of it, see, God ministered to her. Right. So what happened? 
that's when you your faith works or it right. don't work. Right. right. <laughs> that's when you know that you're living by faith. Right. Right. I knew it was anyway, but I mean in Healy. Right. And so, uh, you know, I went through all the procedures that you go through, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was back home and I was had my Bible, my book I was reading and I was meditating. And I just kind of looked up and there was Jesus about halfway from the top of the ceiling to my bed. Mm -hmm. And he just, he was smiling so sweetly. And I was just awed, you know, and I said, honey, wonder if he would have talked to me if I had said something. Mm. Yeah. And so it was just marvelous. Mm. And I thought, now why? And it come to me, that's the peace I said I would give you. Mm. You're wow. healed. Wow. Mm. And every test I've ever had comes back negative. Wow. Wow. So I was healed. Thank and you. I just praise God for it. I have it. I think, <laughs> let, let, let me see if, if, if this is a good way to ask this. You're, you're describing a life by faith, which applies in the very opening statement of tonight's discussion yes. to your salvation, to your healing, to pleasing God. You can only please God by faith. And all of the areas that, that we discussed. And you're talking about kind of like that's, that is available to any and everyone. Absolutely. So if you are living a lifestyle of sickness apart from God, um, then it's just that's your choice. That's is right. that, so it's, I guess, the understanding that if you will take the concept of Mark and some of these other script Hebrews and, and if you actually apply them and internalize them and live by them, then you can live a life like you're describing with miraculous healing, yes. with miraculous provision, with, you know, I mean, you're married 63, you know, all the, all the blessings that God bestowed on you. So something less than that, it's your choice. You're, your you're choice. just allowing your flesh man right. to that's rule right. rather than your spirit, spirit made to rule. That's right. Is that's that accurate? That's that's right. Okay, how do we switch gears if, if uh, the flesh man is kind of ruling and reigning? How do, you, how do you change? Well, you have to do, like Paul said, I keep my body under. Yeah. How do you it, do that? I bring it into subjection. That's by any means after I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. Romans 12, 1 said, Wherefore I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body to God, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable, in his sight. Uh, just refuse. Now, I started practicing this. I saw this truth as a Baptist pastor. Yeah. Uh, if fear would come, I'd say, fear, and speak to it. I resist you in the name of Jesus. I refuse to fear. If doubt would come, because you see, the flesh will want to be afraid. The flesh will want to fear, mm. will want to doubt. But doubt, I resist you in the name of Jesus. I refuse to doubt. And I found out it worked as a Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> they can get it too. <laughs> the Word of God will work for everyone. Yeah. You see? That's right. James said, you remember, but be ye doers of the Word, not hearers only. Right. Uh, he that hears the Word and doesn't do it has deceived himself, he said. Another modern, I mean, mar marginal translation said he's deluded himself. Yeah. Mm. And so, that's what happens a lot of times is that people are walking by their physical senses. You know, Smith Wigglesworth was a man of faith. Yes. We read after. And he, he had a statement that uh, similar to things that I'd said as a Baptist. He said, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved only by what I believe. Mm. Mm. Now, you see, if you let your physical sense dominate you, well, you're letting your body dominate you. Right. See? And so, uh, it just takes, uh, it takes putting God's Word first. Right. Now, for instance, uh, Proverbs, the 20th chapter, verse 21, 22, and 23 said, My son, attend to my words. Yeah. Well, what do you mean, attend to my word? Put my word first. Incline thine ear unto my saying. Listen to what I've got to say. Now, why? 
He went on to say, Let them, my words, not depart from before thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Now why? For they, my words, are life mm. unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Mm. Now the margin of my Bible said, My words are medicine to all their flesh. Well, you see, how do you take your medicine then? Yeah, the word. Attend wow. to my words. Mm. Incline thine ear unto my sin. Now let them, them what my words, not depart before thine eyes. Now you see, if his word says you're healed, well, don't let that word depart before thine eyes. See yourself healed. Right. Now some people call it psychology. I don't know anything like I told Whatever. somebody. I don't know anything about psychology <laughs> or any kind of psychology. But I know what the word says. Right. right. Amen. Let them not. Now, I remember when I was on the bed, I was bed fast 16 months. You ever been in bed 16 months? No, sir. <laughs> That's a long time. Thank God. <laughs> oh, my, my. And, uh, and, and, and gradually, because I had no one to teach me, the Holy Ghost I learned later is the one that led me, and He was leading me in my spirit. But see, I didn't. For instance, when I was healed in August of 1934, I said to myself, now I wouldn't call you that, but I said to myself, you're a poor, silly fool. <laughs> You could have done this eight months ago. Wow. wow. See? But I didn't know to yeah. because I, you know, wasn't taught. That's the reason we teach people. Yeah. But the Holy Ghost gradually got it over to me. But now, I, I, I saw that ver uh, these verses there in Proverbs. Let them not depart before thine eyes. And I was healed in August. But back in April, see, which was three or four months back there, I said, now what would I do if I was up and well. I said, I'd preach. That's what I'd do. So I said, bring me a tablet and pencil. And I couldn't really work. I, I, I had regained some use of the upper part of my body. But from uh, waist down, just no feeling. Mm. And, and so I started putting sermons together. Never could preach them, you know, but mm. one of them. I can preach one of them. Mm -hmm. I, I'm getting ready. I saw myself. Well, I saw myself. Now, see, I was sickly all my life. Never ran and played like others. But I saw myself doing things other teenagers did, jumping and wow. laughing and talking, you know, and playing and, you know, his word. And then I just stayed with the word. Yeah. Now, doctors made house calls in those days, you know. Right. Dr. Robertson, the last doctor on my case, and there's five of them all together through the years. He, uh, he stopped by my house and said, well, he didn't have me fooled. I knew this that the family thought, you know, I was getting off, you know. <laughs> so uh, he, he checked me out. Then, then he said, my Bible was there. He happened to catch me, you know, with, with these notes and Bible on. Mm -hmm. He said, you read that much? I said, yes, sir. He said, you ever read the, you know, in those days we called it funny papers, comic section comic today, section. you know. I said, no, sir, don't have time. Now I'm mm -hmm. <laughs> He said, you ever read any novels? I said, no, sir. You read any Western story? No, sir. You ever read a newspaper? I said, I glance at the headlines sometime. I don't have time. I, all I read was the word. I put that first. Yeah. Now, Dr. Mathis, I have, I have a statement in my possession. Uh, he not only said to have this physical problem, but he said I needed institutional care. <laughs> but then after I was healed, both Dr. Mathis and Dr. Robertson said that man has, a, that young man has the strongest intellect anybody we've ever seen in our life. But you see, it was the Word of God that did it. It wasn't, right. wasn't my strong intellect. It's a matter of changing. Right. It's a matter that the Word right. got within me. Hmm. It inclined that ear to my sins. Put my Word first. And that's the way you do it. Yeah. Now, now, see, God said to Joshua, you remember way back in Joshua, the first chapter and the eighth verse, mm -hmm. the outset of his leading Israel? He said, the Word, the book of this law, now we'd translate that or interpret that and in our light, the Word of God shall not depart out of thy mouth, yeah. but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all written therein. And for thy, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, mm -hmm. thou shalt have good success. Now, who's going to make your way prosperous? God, yeah, in that He gave His Word, but you're going to do it. Right. Yeah. And uh, what you said earlier, see, this people's choice, that, that, that they chose that themselves. They blame it on God sometimes, but they chose that instead of going with the Word. Yeah. The Word of God shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Amen.
Mm-hmm. Now, this Hebrew word translated meditate is translated also murmur. Mm. To yourself, mutter, mutter, mutter. Thou shalt mutter. In other words, just say the word over and over to yourself. By that, you build it into your inner consciousness. Mm. Is that walking in the kingdom of God? What is, when you say the kingdom of God and that we can have it on earth, what are you saying? Well, uh, Paul said, writing to the Romans, you remember, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's it's joy, peace, Righteousness. righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Is that just meditating on the Word and you have stepped in and then you see and perceive everything differently? Well, of course, that's part of it. Yeah. But, uh, but you see, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Right. A lot of people in the kingdom, they've been born again, all right, and they're ma- right with God. That's what righteousness means here, right. Is right relation, right standing with God. And they have peace to some extent. A lot of them don't have any joy. But God wants you to have all of it. But it's by meditating on it and thinking on it and walking in the light of it, you know, declaring that's mine, yeah. confessing, saying it's mine. I have it now. And becoming conscience, conscious. Yeah. Of you know, that. if you actually take your teaching and take it word for word as truth, then if you're a miserable, complaining sort, <laughs> you must just like being that way. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's really kind of a, you're, you're, you're holding a mirror up in front of people and you're yeah. saying, look, this is the way out. Faith, belief, meditating on the Word, internalizing all of the scriptures that God's pathway for you, believing in the goodness. That's, uh, that leads to a life yeah. of 66 years of teaching the Word. Amen. You know, all of the blessings that are obvious in a, in a couple yeah. uh, with with the uh, 23,000 students graduated through uh, a training seminar worldwide. I, so you just choose to be miserable if you, if you want to. Absolutely, absolutely. Is there a, something that they can do to try to change? I'm miserable, I'm... Well, recognize the condition. Right. And Jesus said, come unto me, all you labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Yeah. And find that rest and walk in it. What about your bills? You're just not making it. How do you how do you change? Well, you you just have to. I've been there myself. <laughs> <laughs> you have to keep Love believing does. God. Yeah. Right. Right. Like yeah. like Paul said, you know, writing to the Ephesians, you know, having done all to stand, stand. Yeah. So you just have to stand, and and uh, you know you'll eventually come out. Yeah. Now, when I saw, I, I, I left the last church I pastored and went out on a field holding meetings. And at the end of the year, I'd gotten $100 every month less than what my church paid me. Plus, my church furnished parsonage and all the, you know, right. utilities. But out of this $100 less, I had to pay my own rent, my own utilities, and then traveling expenses. And so I wore my car out and had to sell it for junk. <laughs> Well, I said to the Lord, I, I was holding a meeting, and I, uh, I got a hold of Scripture, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Yes. Well, that's symbolic. Eat the good of the land, I mean, you'll have the best, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And so I, I said, Lord, I had it all written down here, all these figures, everything. And I fasted two or three days and prayed. You know, we're having service every night, didn't have a day service. And so I said, Lord, you know, I did what you said. I wouldn't have left my church. Yeah. They wanted me to stay. In fact, yeah. the deacon board said, Brother Hagin, in those days, Pentecostal church would have an election every year, you know. But they said, if you'll stay, we'll just we'll elect you indefinitely to stay till Jesus comes. <laughs> but the Lord said, go. Uh-uh. <laughs> see? Yeah. Yeah. In, other words, in other words, I'm trying to tell God it's not working, you see. Yeah. And the Lord said to me, the reason, I said, my children are not adequately clothed. They're not adequately fed. We're living in a, th- in a three room. I don't mean three bedroom. I mean three room apartment. Right. Ken's got a rollaway bed. He sleeps on in the kitchen in the wintertime on the back porch in the summertime. And I said, we're not, we're not, we're sure not eating the good of the land. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and, you know, over a period of, of I'm, I'm into my third day, the Lord said, the reason you're not eating the good of the land is because you don't qualify. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, I said, Lord, you... You know, you've hit me with a low blow. 
I do, I do. I, I'm old, Beja. He said, yes, you did. But now notice what that verse said. If you be willing and obedient. Yeah. He said, you were obedient, but you weren't willing. Mm. Oh. Now, boy, I got willing in a hurry. <laughs> it, it didn't take me 10 seconds. I made a little adjustment right down in here. And there I said, is. now I'm ready. I'm yeah. willing. Now then, he's got to correct my thinking. Yeah. Right. Because, see, we had been brought up now over in the Baptist. If we prayed for the pastor, we prayed, Lord, you keep him humble and we'll keep him poor. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you got over in Pentecostals and they doubled up on it. Right. <laughs> Lord, you keep him humble and we'll keep him poor. <laughs> and every church I pastored, we had financial difficulty. Now, we yeah. believe God other We'd finally make it through, you know, yeah. by, as we say, by the skin of the teeth. Right. Wow. See? But you see, the Lord had to correct my thinking now, wow. to think in line with His Word. He said, now, go back to the book of beginnings. Well, I knew that with Genesis. He said, I made the world and the fullness thereof. Yeah. And I said, Adam, I give you dominion over all the work of my hands. Now, he said, then read in the 50th Psalm, it says, the world and the fullness thereof is God's. Yes. Yeah. The silver and the gold is His. Yes. The cattle of a thousand hills. He said, they're not mine because they're in my hand, but they're mine because I created them, right. made them. But for whom did I make them? Mm. Satan and his crowd? Mm. No, he said, I made them for my man Adam. Yeah. But Adam committed high treason and sold you out. Amen. Mm. And I began to see the truth then, see that, wow. that, that, that it's ours. Wow. And so, now, I, you know, we talk about being at the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. We talk about financial, you know. <laughs> I wasn't at the bottom of the barrel. I was under the barrel, the barrel on top of me. <laughs> and I, 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 with that, I got up under the barrel, but then it takes time. Yeah. Right. It don't happen overnight. Yeah. Right. And so little by little, gradually, I, I kept believing God, kept doing what He said to do, paying my tithes and giving offerings and, and doing whatever He said to do. And, and I just gradually climbed out of it, yeah. see? Now, He said to Israel, and you'll have, uh, in 28th chapter Deuteronomy, you know, you'll be the head and not the tail. Now, he's talking about financially. Yeah. And he won't have to borrow, but you, you, you can loan. Right. Well, I had to borrow. I, I had a note. You know, a friend went on down to Tyler, Texas, Henderson, Texas, where I lived in Gar Garla. And so little by little, I got rid of them, see. But uh, I, I, I don't, uh, I tell folks all the time, you know, since I learned that truth, I've never been without money. Yeah. Amen. And, and I don't borrow, I loan. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Thank you for living the Praise life God. Praise and God. Amen. walking your talk and, and being an example to us. Thank you for staying married and for being faithful to your call. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank Praise you. God. Thank you. And thank you for having that meeting that we got a chance to meet. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. In Tulsa, where would you have been having the meeting in Tulsa? Uh, the big downtown Downtown arena. Auditorium, yeah. Downtown yeah, we Auditorium. We still do Convention Center, we still convention do. Convention Center. Mm -hmm. And um, coming up in July, 25th, 20, what, 22nd? 22nd. Mm -hmm. You know, last all that week. week of July. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fast full, the last full week of July. Mm -hmm. Last full week of July. Well, that's where I met Lori. Now, mm -hmm. she doesn't have any sisters, so she won't, you know, don't go for that reason. But um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a wonderful place uh, to go um, and to learn more in depth of what Amen. you've been hearing just a little taste of. And thank and, you for coming. Oh, you guys terrific. haven't been on for a long time. <laughs> well, we haven't. They, they keep asking, but I'm pretty busy. I, I understand. <laughs> now, I, I don't realize I'm over in my 80s, but I'm just as busy as I was 20 years yeah. ago. Like yeah. Caleb. Same Caleb. schedule. And really, I'm looking around a little bit to see if, where I can slow down. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right beside him. And, I think that's and, awesome. and so, you know, if you're teaching there at school while you're all the week, times the weekend comes, you like to rest a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I, I happened to, uh, now, now, they have a second year this year, the, today had a test. Yeah. One of the ladies in the office always gives it for me, uh, in the admissions office of the school, so I had it free, so I said, okay, I'll go. Cool. Just happened to hit me right. Thank mm. you. Super. That was the Lord. <laughs> well, you know he's what? trying to slow down, but he's got eight crusades to do when we start in June. Oh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> well... His the spirit of Caleb. eyes, his Absolutely. eyes were not dim, nor his strength abated, no. and he kept going. That's, That's right. terrific. That's Amen. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.